<sighs> Ronaldo Garcia. I hope you are a pirate very, very soon. Let's finish up the scouting. As we head to the midway point of said scouting. <sighs> Damn. All right, let's look at the uh, relievers. We're doing the same thing. We're pretty much going across the board. Who are our scouts say? Reggie Stoitziatis, just because of your name. We're going through. Who do our scouts say? Hey, this guy could be a steal. Look at them first, then look at the guys at the top of the board. Sixty-five. Hugo Egan. Let's see, sixty-eight, ninety-two. Reggie Steroidias. He's not Mark McGuire. Al Sabel. All right, let's look at these relievers. Everyone pick a religion and start praying. Yeah, I don't care who the hell you pray to. Start praying. We need that pitcher. We need God, anime, Tom Cruise. Everyone needs to be on our side for this one. There's still a lot of 65 to 99s. A lot of them, which is okay. Okay, I pray to Davos as well. Let's look at Nick Edwards, Ray Gutierrez, even Adrian Ortega. Let's start looking at these closers. We could use a good closer given, you know, again, some of our guys are getting older. Absolutely dreadful week as we go 0 for 6. And just like that, we're only two games over 500. Son of a bitch. As is tradition. As is tradition with this team, the second you get any hope, the second, it's the hope that kills you, as they always say. So we suffer an injury. Catcher Darren McCauley and Charlie Rivas, also slightly injured. Okay, we are, man, there's some guys with good potentials, but their overalls are not draft worthy. That really sucks. That really sucks. D-Rex, my goodness, sir. What is the occasion? The 10 gifted sub bomb. How the heck are you? My goodness. What is the occasion? Thank you, but holy hell. If that doesn't bring us the good luck, what will, right? Fuck. If that doesn't bring us the good luck, what the hell will? Nothing is the answer. Just bring in the luck. That's right, D-Rex. And thank you for that. That goes straight to the, uh, the 24's wedding fund. <laughs> we immediately started winning games once you did that, so who's to say? Who is to say, you know? All right. Let's keep looking at the top projected players. Our scouts love Garcia. They absolutely love him. It's like a Jackson Ortiz right now. We're just going to look at the top of the list. Orin Penny. And closer Dave Montgomery Gentry. Closer second and third. Can be done. Montgomery. Do they still make music? Didn't one of No, that's not. Didn't one of them die? Or am I thinking of a different country act? Nope, yeah, that, 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 that's right. Troy Troy Gentry died in a helicopter crash. Well, you never know what direction this stream's gonna go. Anyway, scouting fictional players. <laughs> Why'd you laugh? Because of the fucking awkwardness of it. Not the incident itself, but the goddamn awkwardness of it. I mean, I'm here now, so it's gonna go off the rails. Fair enough, Reaver. <laughs> Thinking either an NHL... Oh, that's right, D-Rex. I do stole you. Either an NHL 11 franchise mode to give the people what we want, MLB 20. I can't do Tuggy versus Twitch chat. I would have to do it on MLB. NHL 11 is interesting because we could do a franchise mode on that that could also be the Friendos play. Could be. Could be. Yeah, D-Rex, you got time. 
You got time to decide, so take your time. Your best bet is to time it once I'm done with this. Because after this MLB franchise, I'm going to you know, obviously take our little bit of a break from franchise mode. Still probably going to play Road to the Show. Uh, closer and shortstop. Is the deal. Levin's what got me into the NHL. Ooh. So there's some sentimentality. I feel ya. I feel ya. Let's see. Okay. A lot of the top guys in this draft aren't looking great. <laughs> A lot of the guys in this draft aren't looking great. Let's get some information on Edgar Fernandez. Let's look at team rank as well. Scouts like Ron Rosado. They also like John Egon. So two starters and a lefty. Two starters and lefty. One of the best soundtracks as well. I'm trying to remember. I'll have to look it up. A lot of those soundtracks kind of blend together, you know? Because a lot of them were good. And then they were shipped for many years. And now this one's good. I give them credit for the NHL 23 soundtrack. It fits the vibe a little bit more. As opposed to a song like Ceiling Fan. <laughs> Alright, we got two weeks left. Do we want to 100% scout out people? Franjo, I mean, this, is, this has been a really, really fun game. It absolutely has been. All right. I don't think we got to look at Gentry. We don't kind of look at uh, John Egon either because there are other starters that I like. There's the second baseman, Jackson Ortiz. Is there anybody else? I mean, we got 70 to 95s. And then it uh, starts to fall off. Okay, so the 70 to 95s are who are we going to focus on, I think. So let's go with second baseman Jackson Ortiz. Left fielder Carlos Quezada, who is hurt, but that does mean he could fall to us and might be worth it. And we also have shortstop Daniel Cedeno. So second, short, and left. The focus for the penultimate week of scouting. We are four games above 500. None of those go. Well, Sedano's worth it. Okay, Sedano's worth it, but the odds he's available for us are incredibly slim. We need Ronaldo Garcia. Oh my God, don't we need Ronaldo Garcia? Seventy to ninety-four for John Egon. You know what? We are going to go for him because we need that scouting or the interest boost. A bunch of other sixty-five to ninety-nines. We still haven't really looked at Manuel Rivera at first base. We'll go for Donovan Ransom as well. A big, big draft for us in Pittsburgh. Let's go ahead and save. I really don't want to have to redo that scouting. It is 2036. We are still looking for our first playoff appearance. I don't know if this will be the year. It's maybe not as likely as ever because there was a couple years ago where we collapsed in the final month of the season. But here we go. Here we go. Pick number 13. We need a lot to go our way for this draft to be memorable. Tampa Bay, Seattle, and Cincinnati start us off. Oh, Tampa Bay. That's the that's the starter right there, isn't it? Select left fielder Carlos Quezada. They were not scared off by the injury. Our scout said avoid him like the plague. Okay. 
Okay. 11 picks to go. Who are you? Who are you? Seattle Mariners select starting pitcher Gaylord Medeiros. Who does look very, very good, but is certainly not the pitcher I would have taken second overall. And I believe it was Cincinnati from World Champs, the third pick in two fucking years, I think it was. The Cincinnati Reds select shortstop Daniel Sedano. I didn't feel confident about him falling to us at 13, that's for sure. It would have been nice. Now we're really all in on needing that starting pitcher. But we're so far away. San Diego at four selects. Starting pitcher Andreas Almonte, who was projected 28th. We're still way too far away to get our hopes up. The Angels at five take starting pitcher Gary Hook, who was projected 70th. We're still too far away to get our hopes up, but oh my god, they're all fucking up. Right fielder Giancarlo Marte, projected 38th, goes six to Milwaukee. Baltimore at seven. Take shortstop Dewey Bain, who was projected 40th, I'm starting to believe. Oh, they're going to crush my hopes and dreams. Cleveland at eight. Take starting pitcher Ryan Ferris. Still not the starter I would have taken. The Mets at nine. Take center fielder Chris Hester. We're three picks away. Why am I doing this to myself? I'm getting my hopes up. The Diamondbacks at ten. Take right fielder Robert Kearns. Please, God. God, give me this, Jesus! Jesus! And we're one away! Come on! Don't do this to me! Please! Please, God! Yes! There's no fucking way! At 13! Ronaldo Garcia! Holy fuck! Oh my god, the power of prayer! Oh! <laughs> There's no shot! This guy survived to pick 13! Oh my god! Alright, let's take the closer, Nick Edwards. Uh, yep, yep, thank you! How the f- how? How was he available at 13? It's not like he was projected in the 40s. He was projected 7th. Look at these off-the-board picks. How many starters? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 starters went before him. 6 starters went before this guy. Either... Everyone else's scouting department should get fired, or my scouts are going to get fired. We'll find out which. Shout the to uh, Tommy Boston. <laughs> oh fucking hell! I don't. Do we? Do we care? Do we care about this? Yeah, Tommy Boston, the Yankees. By the way, I don't. I have never cared less about the rest of the first round. I have never cared less. Fuck, I just want to know how good Garcia is. Yeah, but you know what? Fuck it. Who cares? Who cares? Unfortunately, Nick Edwards did not fall to us. We were a few picks away from him, so we didn't pull off the double of getting like our top two targets. A lot of relievers are off the board. I'll go back and look at the first. Actually, here, really quickly. Really quickly. See, he was projected 15th, 34th, 59th, 45th, 95th, 31, 36, 32, 66, and 26. Edgar Fernandez for the world champion Boston Red Sox. Who do we have available? Who do we have? So, Adrian Ortega looks like a slam dunk B potential closer. 
There's another closer in Masias, who is a bit too much of a risk because he could be a C. So could Ortega, but the odds are very much against it. And based off of who we have scouted, I want to look at team rank here. Yeah, based off of who we have scouted, this is the way to go. Otherwise, we'd be looking at Manuel Gallegos. I know he's 23, but holy shit. The shortstop, Josh Perez. We have another pick. 12 selections from now. We have to get this one right. Ortega was projected ninth. He won't make it. Gallegos 14th, 37th for Rosas, 41st for Perez. I think we hope that Perez falls. Rosas again, the insane potential. I mean, we certainly look at Rosas over Gallegos. So there's the B potential closer. More than likely B potential closer. There's, according to our scouts, the guaranteed A potential starter, Leo Rosas. Mid-60s to high 60s for starting overalls. Not bad, but he is 23. Or there's the shortstop, Josh Perez. But we're good at shortstop with free toss. We can't risk it for Perez. Do we risk it on a 23-year-old starter? Mid-60s overall. Or do we go for probably the last good reliever in the draft? I kind of agree that Rosas should drop. I think we take Ortega, and then if Rosas is available at 48, we take him. I think that's the way. I think that's the way. Fucking Ronaldo Garcia, my God. <laughs> I can't fucking believe that just happened. So with this pick, we are going to take the closer, especially with the amount of closers we've lost recently. We're going to take Adrian Ortega. Feel pretty good about that. So here we go. A long way away from Leo Rosas. Not quite as dramatic as last time. Let's sim it. Ah, well, we didn't get him. He went 45th to the Mets, so we didn't pull off the double. I got to be honest, though. I'm okay with that. Had we not had Garcia in round one, that would have been devastating. And it still might be. But we did need to get another reliever into the mix, especially if Galloway is going to be leaving. So that was drafting need as opposed to perhaps best available with Rosas. That was a tough call. That does leave us, though, with the shortstop, Josh Perez, who's uh, one hell of a silver medal. One hell of a silver medal. And honestly, someone who I might look to move to second base in the future. So we're going to take Josh Perez there. I mean, honestly, between Perez, Ortega, and Garcia, that's a pretty damn good start to a draft. Round three. Yeah, we're likely to just kind of be in no man's land here. Team rank is starting to go out the door. There is this other older starter, Casey Aldean, but obviously his overall is a bit lower. In terms of scouted, there's also Randy De La Rosa. There's a lot of these guys that we pretty much know are B potential. Their overalls might suck. But it's better than just being like, all right, uh, Jackie Taylor. So honestly, we're going to focus on these guys. This is what we did the uh, the option for. I'm opening up some Tim Hortons hockey cards. Just got redemption for Chris Jones. Hey, there you go. I saw uh, Tactics put out a video today about uh, about those cards. I don't know. I have a local Tim Hortons. I just don't know if they do it. Okay. So there's all Dean, 90 to 95. So all Dean or Adeline. I'm going to name him all Dean. I'm going to rename him. Looks good. There's Hal Sabell. There's another bit of a long shot reliever. Honestly, based off of the potentials, I think we go for Casey. 
And then we look for that reliever in the next round. It's going to be a pretty pitching heavy draft. Uh, Crash, if you want to throw those in there too, Jesus. I, uh, I wouldn't say no. All right, the reliever is also still there. So we'll take our fourth pitcher of the draft. Second reliever, Hal Sabell. We got around five, three dudes left. 80 to 94, 80 to 95, 80 to 95. Even if their overalls are low as shit, who cares? You know? Uh, we'll go for Ross Colon. The third baseman, Ross Colon. Brother of Carlito. Caribbean cool. And our final pick will be a best guess pick because our last two guys went off the board. And it will be... Might be Uribe, even though he's hurt. Might be. 74 to 88. Well, even though this guy has uh, got some injury concerns, Mr. Uribe is going to be our pick for the hell of it because it's the sixth round and who cares? Here we go. This is the biggest negotiating period in a long time. We have no home run derby representative. San Diego Steve Hedger is leading the way. Who's our all-star this year? If we indeed only had one. So long, Del Bowser. Uh, all-star this year, Diego Espinoza makes another all-star game. It's been a while. Jude do it. Juan Guerrero. Oh, no. He's bounced back. His overall still hasn't gone up. But he has an eight. Oh, God. Well, that's going to be a hole to do this offseason. Like, it's a good thing that he's bounced back, but it's all. Lewis Courtney makes the all star game. Way to go, Lewis. Greg Marlin of the Marlins. Juan Soto. Fucking stop already. Jesus. Now you're just showing off. All right, here we go. Here we go. I can't. I can't believe this might be happening. <sighs> I'm afraid to sign. Honestly, I'm afraid to sign anybody else. I really am. I'm not going to sign anybody else until I know that I can get Ronaldo Garcia. He is top priority. I would trade anybody else for him in terms of just making sure that we have the money to sign him. So we'll just keep building up interest on people and not sending out those other deals because he is top priority on being signed first. That was a weird little glitch there. All right, one more week. How has his potential dropped? He was 100% sure at the draft. How the fuck are you going to tell me that he's now just a B? Scouts, you better hope you were right the first time. You better fucking hope that you were right the first time or you're heading to the fucking unemployment line. As it is, he refused to accept the initial offer. I have... If this is accurate, I am going to fire... Those three scouts out of a fucking cannon. I swear to God. I swear to God.
I have I have nothing to say right now. I might not even have the money to sign everybody that I want to sign. I cannot believe this. And coincidentally, this is also the year that we have absolutely struggled the most to sign players. It is deadline day. Cologne and Sabell are going to get top priority. Cologne signs. Sabell signs. We're down to second round shortstop Josh Perez, who was apparently also dropped. And Uribe. I'm not going to have the money to sign Perez, so let's just try to bring in Uribe. Uribe signs. Will Perez sign? Everybody signed. Well, that's a fucking miracle. I swear to God, if they got it wrong. I swear to God. He was advertised as a 90 to 95 high 60 overall. That is the single hardest kick to the dick this game's ever given me. Worse than the, the Brown to Oakland trade or its draft pick. That is that is the worst. That is the absolute worst. Ortega, who had a very good chance of being a B, is only a C. What looked like what could have been our best draft ever is going up in flames. As the scouts were wrong on all three of our first picks. And obviously Adeline's only a 57 overall at 22. House of Bell's only a 56 at 23. Ross Cologne's got a long way to go. Uribe's got a long way to go. Again, his scouted potential at the start was 90 to 94. And by the time we were through the signing process, he dropped down to 70 to 84 and was an 80.
Ortega, 78 to 88 to 75. Perez had a much higher potential than that, but by the time we're done with the signing process, it just plummets. I I don't I don't really care about about other teams. I guess I'll go through this. I don't even recall anybody else I was hoping for, really. Like, he was the guy. And our scouts were so, so fucking wrong. I, I just... I am not often at a loss for words. But, oh my god. Tommy Boston was a better pick. I don't know when he was selected. Please, God, tell me he was selected in the top 12. I think he was top three. I am pretty sure. Third overall. Okay, people feel the same way. So it doesn't matter. We couldn't have gotten him. But Jesus. <sighs> Just to know that there was another another elite option out there, you know? Ryan Ferris wasn't that great. That, you could argue this pitcher is better than who we just got. I... I what do you say to your scouts getting it that fucking wrong? Donovan Ransom was better. Donovan Ransom was better. John Egan was probably better. Gary Hook was not. Howard Cox was better. What a steal there with Kenny Masters. Egan went the pick before. Hmm. Ryan Favre. Gaylord Medeiros, the number one pick. Nobody good for Texas. Steal and a half for Atlanta at the end of the draft. Dell McKinnon. That's a great pick. Yeah, turns out we probably should have taken Leo Rosas, huh? The swiftest, most fierce, devastating groin kick that we have ex He was second overall, if I'm not mistaken. In a draft 
with two generational talents. It looked like we were going to get an amazing, amazing steal at 13. And slowly but surely, we discovered that Ronaldo Garcia is not who was advertised.